shockwaves of fear outside Seattle. A savage attack on a popular teacher at a high school rocks the community. I think it's a little unnerving. Um, we trust that the district will make the right decisions. 63-year-old Calvin Pygott was alone in his classroom at the end of the day. He says he was beaten on the back of his head and knocked unconscious. When I heard that he got so brutally attacked and left to die, I was kind of, I didn't believe it. Pygott says he awoke with a zip tie strangling his neck. He crawls into the hallway for help. Another teacher sees him, cuts the zip tie, and calls for help. Time is of the essence in those type of situations. So um, I'm, I'm very happy that she was around. The Seattle suburb of Bothell rallies around the veteran woodshop teacher. He was one of my favorites, definitely by far, because he was so relatable. It's just heartbreaking to know that it, why him, you know? It's just the age, and he's been around for so long, so it's just can't get my head through it. Initially, cops were having a hard time finding a motive and a lead. Detectives are currently looking at campus security video. With the city in a panic, classes were canceled for a day to protect the crime scene and the community. So I think it was a very wise decision for, to, for everyone to stay home. Our affiliate KCPQ caught up with a still shaken Pygott a few days later. On the man, I looked better than I did on Friday. I appreciate everyone's uh, uh, wishes and support. As the intense investigation continues, cops begin to focus their attention on a surprising suspect. It's Pygott himself. They ask for a lie detector test, and he consents. The administrator explains how the test measures false statements. Things that happen throughout your entire body is instantaneous. Lift your arm up and out towards me. And soon she gets to the nitty gritty. Are you the person who placed the zip tie around your neck on May 19th at Buffalo High School? No. Are you the person responsible for causing the injury to your head on May 19th at Buffalo High School? No. Were you truthful with the Buffalo detectives when you stated that you don't know who assaulted you? Yes. This question are bringing up. Thoughts and emotions again. Then he explains away a question about his breathing. I have a COPD as well. I forgot to tell you that. Pygott sticks to his story, but he fails the test. Cops confront him, and he caves. When the detectives provided Mr. Pygott with the results of the polygraph examination, as well as other numerous inconsistencies, Mr. Pygott admitted he had made up the story. What could possibly cause a man to fake his own attack? Why go to such lengths to play the victim? I, I feel really badly. This is sad news, but uh, again, I give him the benefit of the doubt. In a recent police interview, Pygott said it was all a failed suicide attempt. At a mountain of debt, you're worth more dead than you are alive. If the suicide has worked, I would not be here having to explain it. He claimed he put the zip tie around his own neck and hit his head several times with a hammer, but that made no sense to cops. He didn't have any injuries at all. He didn't have a concussion. Detectives hint at another possible motive. Was there anything going on with you at the school and the administration that was you were in conflict with? Wasn't there something about your evaluations and they're asking you to be a little bit more attentive to your school, your students? Pygott wouldn't admit to such problems. And publicly, Bothell PD was unwilling to shed any light on the reasons behind the bizarre behavior. He did provide a statement as to why, but uh, we're not going to get into that. KCPQ tried to get some answers. No, thank you. Hi. No a lot of money and resources were spent to solve a vicious crime that never took place. That much Pygott was willing to acknowledge to cops. I do understand that a lot of people were inconvenienced and put on alert and costs and so forth. Prosecutors have charged Pygott with two gross misdemeanors, making a false statement to a public servant and obstructing public officers. He pleaded not guilty. If convicted, Pygott could face 364 days in jail and a $5,000 fine for each offense.